Let's go back to the New Zealand experience for a moment. Has it made any, their changes and, and their equivalent of the voice in all these decades, has, it, has there been any tangible beneficial outcomes for Maori indigenous people there that perhaps otherwise wouldn't have been accrued? I mean, what we're doing in Aboriginal affairs here is simply not working. I don't think this is the right answer, but let's learn from other places. Has anything really changed in New Zealand, for example? Well, the best available evidence suggests that it hasn't. I mean, in the, the colleagues we've been talking to in New Zealand, Casey Costello is one such example, a Maori woman who's at the forefront of this debate, has said, look, the Waitangi Tribunal and the experiment with co-governance has not worked to resolve the very significant challenges in their Maori population. And the reason it doesn't typically resolve these issues is firstly because um, these commissions, bodies, tribunals, voices, they end up being overtaken by the inner city activists anyway, so their focus is not necessarily on getting better outcomes in remote and regional parts of the country. Um, but secondly, and this is the, the key point, we already have a very good understanding of the kinds of building blocks that you need to have a successful and dignified life. Access to the dignity of work, um, crime-free and safe communities, access to critical infrastructure and social services, getting the kids into schools and the adults into work. Um, this is what works to help resolve um, significant disadvantage. And the key point is quite simply, we can already get on as a government and as civil society and try and improve conditions on the ground through some of those ideas that I just mentioned. We don't need to have a divisive race-based third chamber in Parliament based in Canberra to communicate those basic truths, which by the way is not only relevant to Indigenous Australians, it's relevant to all Australians because we all have the same needs and wants in life and that's why the voice to Parliament will simply divide us without making any noticeable difference.